Hello everyone, welcome back to the Power BI tutorials. In this video, we will see that um, how can we just uh, merge the different Excel workbooks into one in Power BI. Why we are working with Excel? Because um, in Excel, there is a huge possibility that your data is in Excel sheets that you need to import into Power BI. Okay. So there are these different options or the different instances that are available with the working with the Microsoft Excel data. We have already seen that what would happen if we just uh, merge the different tables or the different sheets data into one another. Then what would happen if we just merge the different tables having the different number of columns into one another. In this video, we will be basically seeing that how can we merge the different workbooks into one another. Okay. So if we take a look at our data distribution, we have this folder called quarter one sheets. Okay. So this is the whole folder that is containing all of our data that upon which we want to work. Okay. So if you just double click over it, we have three workbooks, the Jan 2020, Feb 2020 and March 2020. These are these three separate workbooks or whatever data we have is organized into these separate workbooks, which we want to merge together right now if we take a look at these three different workbooks together we have first this jan 2020 workbook it is containing a sheet called jan 2020 and in this sheet we have only one table that is containing the three columns the date product and the quantity column which we have already seen in the previous videos all right so these are the three columns Similarly, we have the second workbook known as the Feb 2020 workbook, which is also having this Feb 2020 sheet and the three columns are there. And similarly, in the March workbook also, the March 2020 sheet name March 2020 and the three columns. Now we will be seeing in Power BI using the Power Query Editor that how can we merge the data that is spanning through the different workbooks into one table or one query. So let's just go to our Power BI and let's just load. So we can just go to get data and click on more. Now, basically what we are going to do is we are going to load our data from the multiple workbooks. Okay. All these three workbooks are present in a single folder. So what we are going to do right now is in Power BI, we have to select that we have to uh, just get our data or import our data from the folder. So basically we have to select the folder as the option and from that particular folder, we can just load our data. So that's what we want to do. So it's going to take some time, right? Okay. So you have get this folder option. We can just click on folder and click on connect and wait for a few seconds till it asks us for that, which folder we want to uh, load. So this is the folder path. So you can just go to this browse option. And you can just select it from here or what you can do is since we have already opened our folder, we can just copy this path and in our power BI, we can simply just paste this path and click on OK. Now you got to wait for a few seconds till that particular folder is loaded. OK, so what we are getting is uh, we are getting these six um, basically workbooks. Why we are getting six? Because these three are opened up right now. So what we can do is we can just close these workbooks. Uh, okay, Jan closed, Feb closed and March closed. Okay, we can just click on cancel and we need to again this load this data. Why? Because there were three instances of the open workbooks already present there and three instances of the closed workbooks or the original workbooks. So we don't want that. We don't want duplicate records to be uh, loaded into a Power BI. That's why we have to cancel that operation. So one important thing that you must note is whenever you are working with this um, type of data, you need to just close all of the data that you have opened. Like if you are trying to work with the workbooks, you need to close that workbooks. Now you can see that since we had closed those workbooks, now we are only getting these three instances. That is the name, extension, date access, date modified, date created and everything. Basically, this is all the metadata that is the data about the data. So this is what we have got. Let's just click on transform data. Uh, so what will this transform data do? Uh, it would open up the power query editor, right? Now, 
you can see we have got quarter one sheets this whole folder and uh, the sheet name now um, since we have got these three sheets name and the content column okay so basically what is this content column is whatever the data is present in these sheets is actually consolidated in the format of this content column if you just click over it so you can see we are getting the name of the sheet or the name of the workbook along with it we are getting the size so it is basically the content whole of the content is present here that is compressed into the size or into these number of bytes it is compressed and been stored into this content column okay so now we are only concerned about this content column and the name column so what we can do is we can just control click over um, both of them and uh, what we can do is we can just right click so there is this option of remove other columns since we are only concerned about these two columns we are only concerned about what data is lying inside the workbook and not the data about the workbook so we can just click on remove other columns so that uh, now only the data of the workbook would be visible to us and not any other data okay now once we've got that what we can do is in this add columns option we can just go to this custom column this custom column helps us to add a new column as per our choice so we can just uh, change its name to data and we can use a custom column formula so basically there are these different types of the formulas that you can use as per the data source that you are trying to uh, import and whatever you are trying to extract from that particular data source so what data source we have used we have used an excel data source so we can simply write like excel and you can see the first option that is excel.workbook if you just click over it so excel.workbook is written why we have used this workbook function because uh, this workbook is where our data is originally stored and when we are talking about this name feb 2020 jan and march these are the names of our workbooks that's why we have used this workbook okay so what we want to do is we want to extract this data that is pointed to by this binary format so for this what we can do is we can just write these parentheses and inside these parentheses you can see we have a list of available columns from this particular source so we can just select this contain column and click on insert now what we can do is we can just click on ok and you can wait for a few seconds to see that we have created a new column by the name of data and now this data is containing these tables so if you just click on this kind of an arrow option uh, make sure that all of them are selected and we can just click on ok now what happens is uh, we are getting these six names uh, we are getting its data we are getting the items like what are the items different items like feb 2020 table 1 3 and so on and we are also getting its kind that whether it is a sheet or whether it is a table so these are the different types of data or the uh, metadata which is about the particular sheet or the particular table now we do not want the data about the sheet or the table we want the data inside the table so into this kind column what we can do is we can make sure that only the tables are visible we can apply a filter to make sure only the tables are visible and you can see now we have three tables table one three table one and table one three four all right so basically we do not want this table data we only want the data inside the table okay so what we can do is we can just take up this sheet column or the workbook column that is the name of the workbook the data dot data is basically containing the original data and this data dot name is containing the name of that particular table okay so we want these three columns right now we can just right click and click on remove other columns so all the other columns would be removed and we are left with these three columns right now we can just rearrange them so first we are getting the name then we are getting the name of the table and then we are getting the table data now if you just click over this table data then you can see we are getting the original data of that particular table okay let us just undo that step or we can just select any of the uh, cells and you will see on the downside that uh, all of the data uh, is previewed to us so now what is our purpose is we need to extract this data so how can we extract it we can just select this data column uh, make sure we click on these arrows these are the different columns these are actually the columns of our tables only okay like the date product and the quantity column and uh, 
make sure this option use original column name as prefix is unchecked otherwise uh, whatever the columns we are getting like first is the date column so its name would be changed to like data dot data dot date which is not what we want okay we just want the date column the product column and the quantity column so we can just select these three and click on ok and you can see that now uh, the different columns we have got that is the date column the product column and the quantity column the total number of rows if you check over here is 21 which is absolutely correct now if you want you can just remove this column um, by just selecting that particular column right clicking and click on uh, remove and similarly you can also remove this name column by right clicking and removing it so we have got this table these three tables that have been extracted from the different workbooks and now if you want to load this data you can just go to close and apply and you will see that this whole uh, data would be loaded up so you need to wait for a few seconds till this quarter one sheets is uh, loaded into power bi okay so now quarter one sheets is now available in the form of a table which is containing the three columns date product and quantity and that's exactly what we wanted so that's all in this video thanks for watching